Good day. Um, again, a really good day. Uh, I was impressed with our kids. Uh, you know, they're away from campus for a uh, really sensible game or bowl game, and then they, you know, they go train somewhere and they come back. And I thought, you know, their trainers everywhere. You know, they trained, did a great job. I uh, thought they looked good today. Um, you know, obviously some look better than others, and you guys can, anybody can have their um, their opinion on you know who looked good and who didn't. But uh, I was ex I was uh, impressed with the way they came back. You guys had a lot of the faster times at the combine. Some of the times ran here would have beaten more times at the combine. What allow? What helps you, your guys be so fast on and off the field? You know what? You know I don't know what it is. I mean, you know, there's just you know a bunch of different things. Obviously, you know the trainers wherever they were helped out because we don't run many 40s. But you know, to me, when you talk about strength and conditioning, you talk about you know Coach Stacchiotti and his entire staff. I mean. Um, the development they've had, they just didn't go away for a couple months and all of a sudden get fast. I mean, Brandon Hill was fast already. Mm -hmm. You know, Izzy was fast as we watched him run through defensive lines and linebackers. But, uh, you know, I think it's, it's you know, the strength work we do. Um, I think it's getting them to play fast every day in practice and mm -hmm. not something they've never done before. We play fast. We try to practice fast every day and try to get the best out of them. So I think, you know, that's part of it. But, you, gotta, you know, my hat goes off to uh, Mike Stacchiotti and our strength staff. What goes through your mind when a guy I can't even think of gets drafted in the first round and all your defensive backs, like three in a row, have gotten drafted three years in a row? What, what, what's, what does it say to you? That's what we're supposed to do. That's our job. Our job is to develop these guys and, and get them to play and and, and, uh, and teach them. I can, you know, as a coach, you know, you know, we don't coach the forty. We try to get them fundamentally. You watch go through the drills. You watch Eric Howe go down that hash and go right down the hash and open up his hips and flip and go and, and, and you know like you know straight as an arrow and you watch things like that and that's our job as coaches and it's our job as coaches when they talk to a coach that they can speak the language and they can talk football and that's that's our job as coaches our guys do a plus work there too pat considering all that this group accomplished on the field during their time at pitt does this give you a little bit extra pride or is this pro day a little extra special just seeing that you know this group was the acc championship group this group was the group that got you ranked back to back years do you carry an extra pride with this group yeah i mean pride's a you know i don't know ugly word i mean it's not pride it's just what we do it's our job you know it's something you love to do it's a it's a passion more than it is a pride thing you know um you know again this is no different than the first year that you know you those are our kids out there you know uh, and i always say this you know sometimes NFL coaches, you know, that don't know you, they're not calling you because they know we're going to say good things. They're, they're like our kids, they're our children. There's someone, you know, we, you know, we're with them all day long. Um, but you know, I mean, from first pro day to, you know, this one, number eight or whatever it is, uh, it's really the same. Do you, do you find yourself reflecting on a day like this? Like, look at somebody and think, man, I remember being in that living room when that guy was a junior. Oh yeah, you reflect a lot on it. You know, every one of them as you go through the process and. You know, I'm looking at the D-line at the end going, man, I'm going to miss these three days. These three guys, are you know, those are those are three football players over there. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you're reflecting, you know, every one of them, where they came from and what they did and how they did it. And and uh, it's been a long time. How about Will Kalaja? Just what stood out to you most when you are recruiting him? And then where's he developed most since he's been at Pitt? Oh, man, he's developed in every respect. I mean, I, you know, on the field, off the field, socially. Um, I mean, just, you know, in every way, um, you know. I mean, he's a, he's a good football player. I mean, he's, he's gotten better, um, and he's learned how to have a motor. I think, you know, when you talk about motor and consistency, probably that might be the, the place he's most improved from when he was a baby, and he could do it a play, and then he'd take a couple off. Now he does it all. I mean, it's, it's natural. I mean, they wanted more drills. They're like, that's it? We're done? They wanted more uh, at the end there. How about what just, you know, he's, he's consistently, it seems like, proven to people that he's not this undersized guy, that there's a lot more to his game. When you were recruiting him, did you have questions at all about his size or? No, we're not, I'm never worried about size. Um, you know, sometimes those bigger guys, you know, can get knocked off the ball quicker, you know, the shorter guys. And again, he's not short, he's six foot one, uh, and a little bit more, I guess, and he's, he's 280, so he's not small. He's, he's played to get, he's played big and big, this is big boy football. This is, you know, uh, this is, this is, you know, I think he's proven that, you know, some people don't have the, the, the scheme, um, you know, maybe the, you know, the ability to coach like we do. We can play with those guys. We're not worried about the Aaron Donalds of the world. We, we kind of like those guys. So what about size? Never. We don't worry about size at all, ever. What about guys like Voss? He, he was joking around. Like, you saw call him your your recruit because you saw him dunk in high school. You went there with Tim. What's it mean like for you see, like for a guy like him who you seen go through this entire process? I mean, it's, they're they're all the same. I mean, you know, everybody had a different uh, different path to get where they are, and you know that was one of those telling. Uh, some of the coach from the Steelers, just his, you know, that last that last visit, going out and, you know, just not even looking for him and found him by accident. Uh, it was a it was a good day.
I probably should go back and look at the notes and find out what day that was and put it on my calendar for the rest, rest of my life. But, uh, you know, he's he's special, just like they all are. Can you share any interesting tidbits about any conversations with scouts you had today? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, the, most of the conversations, you know, a couple individual and, you know, some of them I'll keep private. But the, the big thing is just, you know, well, we had one guy from the Rams talk about we got the best workout here of any uh, thing he's got. And that was just at the end there, um, Ted. Um, but I think, uh, you know, the big thing here is just how smart our guys are and, you know, just, you know, you know how they how they represent themselves out here. I think that's the big thing. Why is it a quote unquote accident that you you saw Servasia? What, 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 tell me that story. Again. You know, you know, we were just going recruiting and we, we popped into his high school and, uh, you know, we didn't we didn't go there to see him. We were just going there to say hello to the coach, look and see if they had any underclassmen. It was late in January before the February sign date at the time. And, and the coach said, I still got a linebacker out there. He said, let me see him. So I watched the tape on my phone. I'm watching his huddle tape on the phone. It's like, this guy's pretty good. Let me see him. You know, and then I met him. And then we, you know, we were able to talk at that time in January. And I said, can you dunk? And he said, yes. And I, he goes, let me send it to you. He texted me the pictures. And I was like, you have a scholarship. And we're bringing it up this weekend. And that was it. A couple hours later, a couple, couple, a uh, couple hours later, Syracuse offered him after we did. <laughs> do you ask everyone, every prospect you visit, can they dunk? Why did no, you want to see him? No, I just want to. I don't know. I just, I don't know. You know how those just happen. Mm -hmm. I just want to find out how athletic he's still mm -hmm. out there. And you know, we, that's a, that's the thing. We we trust our opinion on what you know what we see, and uh, you know I think that's important. Pat, is he had a couple of injuries over the off season he was dealing with and missed the combine but came out today and ran a really good 40 and showed off his athleticism. I mean, what stood out to you about him today and you know what makes you think that he's a fit for the next level? That 41 inch vertical and I looked at his back I was like whoa look at that dude you know and maybe I just haven't looked him with his shirt off in a long time but uh, he was a beast over there you know jumping and then the way he ran at 217 or 18 pounds I mean he's that's a big man running fast so um, I don't think he played it that way. I think he, you know, probably has another seven. Most guys get skinnier for pro day, so they can run faster. He put on, you know, more horsepower and went out there and, and ran really well. Are you impressed with how athletic and how polished he is for his age? I think he's only 20, like he just turned 20. Yeah, I mean, you know, he obviously could have had another year, but yeah, I mean, he's 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 a grown man right now. And what are your, what are your thoughts on John Patricia giving it another try and shape and then just the not giving up? Yeah, I, mean, he's, I don't know if he's ever going to give up. He might be coming back in three years asking if he have another day. <laughs> um, you know, we initially were not going to let him run because uh, I don't want a bunch of guys. This is about, you know, the 2022 you know, guys. Uh, but I said, listen, if you can find an NFL team that wants you to run, then, you know, we're going to listen to the NFL. We're not, you know. So, you know, I had that, you know, very you know, simple talk with him. And, you know, his agent got someone to say, hey, we want to see him run. So and he, did, he did a nice job today, so. Pat, there are a lot of mock drafts that are predicting Kalaj to be taken in the first round and would be back-to-back -back years with the first-round pick from Pitt. Um, what would that say about you and the success of this program that you've built? It would say a lot. That'd, that'd be big time to have two first-rounders put another guy up on the board. and It just tells you about our, you know, our evaluation and our development. It tells you that we're looking at the right guys character-wise, athletic-wise, and so we've done a good job at you know, looking at what we want. And I don't know how many offers. I mean, I don't go back and look. I don't know how many stars he had. I don't know how many offers he had out of high school. but. You know, we found someone that we liked, just like a Kenny Pickett, and and then you know we bring him in here and we develop him the right way. And I think uh, it says a lot about you know you know what we'll do if, if someone comes to Pitt. We have a final question before we get to Des Alexander. Anyone else? 